centering. You don't need to speed speed up the wheel. The key is pressing your hand. My right hand is pressing on the scratch pan. Then I push down the clay. Okay, and you can see that my hand, not, I said I'm using my center of the palm to push the clay. I try to use more of the fingertip here, and this part here, and just pinch while using my left hand. See that this is the part that I push, and this hand is just pinch, squeeze and pinch, and then while I'm squeezing down using my left hand, and just brace all the fingers together, holding the hand, and push down. As long as your right hand is not moving, it's fairly easy to center the clay this way. When opening, I'm taking it down, use my left hand, and again, my right hand is bracing on the splash pan, left hand is kind of abrasion on my right hand and squeeze it all the way down to the right thickness before I open it wider. And again the speed of the wheel is not super fast either. And now it's good thickness and then I'm starting to widen the base. And again, using my right hand to, to brace it. And left hand is touching the right hand. Okay, so that is opening. And the floor is not a quite flat or straight. You can use a, your fingertip. Oh, I have a tool here that is fairly uh, nice to use. Just brace it here, hold it together. And if your wheel is spinning counterclockwise, just compress it from the right hand side, push it all the way, and then uh, move the tool to the right. And the floor is very flat. And also you will have a very sharp corner by when using this tool, this corner is very sharp. Hold it down and then brace it and then push down and pull to your right. So this is what this tool is all about. This part here is for flow compressing. I'm now ready to raise up the wall. Before I do that, I could color it a bit. Squeeze it, both hands squeeze it. Especially the, uh, the very corner here, when I'm colored, this right fingertip is pinching the clay, squeezing it, so you don't end up with having too much clay hanging out there. Right, and then I'm ready to raise it up. Since this piece of clay is not very big or very thick, so my initial lifting is just using my left hand to grab the clay and pull it and lift it up. Right, and then this right hand is, again, connecting on the splash pan and then hold it here. So the thumb is touching here, right there. So it, the left hand will be more stable. And this hand is holding on the side of it and pinch the clay and just raise it up. All the way to the top. And again, put all the slip back to work and color, color to make the wall straight. And this part here, pinch it in, these two fingers, pinch it in. Make sure it is slippery everywhere. And again, start to lift the clay from this corner, but you see that my thumb is too short. But I still want to do the same thing like the lifting the wall. So what I do is extending my right thumb here. 
right so this is the hand this part is slightly touch it and extended my right thumb pretend this is the left thumb and then rest my left my elbow on my lap to uh, to stabilize it right there and pinch the wall and slowly let go and compress remove the slip up the fingertips and put it on the inside of the wall for outside just touch it up with a little bit of water and a little bit of slip and you brush up and down to make it slippery and again there is a steel clay hanging here you can pinch it in you can use this finger to pinch it in Okay, and I'm going to do the same lifting meter. The thumb is too short, so extended my right thumb. My left thumb is too short, so extended my right thumb. And this hand is slided, hold it. Not much pressure here, right together. I'm pinch. And slowly let go. Slightly compress the rim. Brush the slip. Brush that water and slip. Okay, I will do one final lifting. Clean up the corner. Okay, since I'm going to do the sodium silicate stretching, so I tend to lift my wall slightly thicker, a little bit thicker than one quarter of an inch, quarter, quarter of an inch. And now I'm going to get the surface clean using my number three wooden rib. So many I just use my fingertip, okay, my fingernail and the fingertip to draw the texture all the way to here. And with the fingers inside to support it. Right, I'm cleaning up my bed. Before I brush the sodium silicate, I like to clean up my bed. Even the corner here. I like to leave about, maybe depending on what you're making, uh, for the cover gel, I like to leave about one inch without brushing the sodium silicate on. So this is about one inch here and a brush down below. The thicker the sodium silicate and also the thicker of the clay wall, you will get a, a bigger crack, crackle texture. And of course, thicker you could uh, stretch it farther away so you will get a bigger crackle. And I usually uh, just wash my brush in the bucket of water, a little bit of a sodium silicate is not going to affect too much. So just wash it in the bucket of the water.
And now I'm going to bring my torch or heat gun. You're going to use torch, heat gun, hair dryer. Uh, if you're using heat gun, it's very powerful. So you probably, all you need to do is maybe like 30 seconds for the drying service. On the heat gun, I would say maybe one minute. On hair dryer, maybe two minutes to three minutes. Okay, Dep depending on how hot it can go. And my heat gun can go up to like four or 500 degrees Fahrenheit. So about one minute should be plenty. All right, I can see that uh, there's still a little bit shiny on the deeper groove, but on the higher point, the shiny goes away. So that's that's the, the, the stage that I'm looking for. And uh, now you cannot touch the outside any longer anymore. So just leave it alone and put your hand here, right? Hold it on the side, side of a splash pan. But inside you want to be a uh, slippery. So use the sponge and add a little bit of water to the sponge. And then you want to coat and rehydrate it or brush the uh, slip on the, in, on the inside of the wall. Right, so now the inside is slippery enough. And uh, if you want to get a, a nicer, better curve, you can use a rib. I'm using my three inches small, the smallest round rib to go inside and stretch it in. Right, so that is three inches round rib. Just grab it, put my finger there, grab it, and using from this part here all the way stretch to this part. And do the uh, fine tune using just my fingertip. And my fingertip is like here. Slightly touch a little bit more touch it here. Right, so usually I will get my bottom porch nice, nicely curved before I take care of the top. And now I think the uh, bottom portion base looks good. So I will stop right here and start to take care of the top. And my personal preference for the little part, or even the teapot, is keep this part here simple, just 
a little lips there, and then uh, put the gallery on the lid. And the top is slightly up my level, so I'm going to use my knife to cut it. Use the knife to cut it level. Right, so that's it for the body, and then just chop the uh, unwanted clay up the bottom. Okay, so the tool you see, I'm chopping up the corner using my skirt trimming, wet trimmer. This is my number 17. If you are spinning the uh, the wheel counterclockwise, or if you are spinning the wheel clockwise, you can use my number 18 trimmer, wet trimmer. Okay, so that is the shape. And before I put it aside, I need to measure the width. Okay, so this is about right. Now making the lid for the sodium silicate cover jar. I'm throwing the lid upside down, meaning um, I will trim the, uh, the knob later. And then I'll open the shallow, shallow dish. In the meantime, you are going to keep the outside part slightly thicker because you are going to push the gallery here. And basically you are just using the thumb to form the inner part. Um, I find out the thumb is very good for throwing the lid is that your thumb, this part here, you have a very nice curve, this curve. And you can use the curve to uh, push the inner part of uh, of the clay, of the dish, and it just follow the curve nicely. Before I go further, I want to know what approximately width of that. So it's it's getting closer, just a little bit, and then I will push the gallery here. So give myself a roughly idea where is my gallery B. Put my both finger here and. This right index, index finger is just squeezing from the middle. So you will see that it's roughly that the gallery will be here. Bring back my caliper and see that it's fairly close. And just do the fine tune. For making the gallery, you're going to use this tool is, is a good tool to use, but make sure this is nice 90 degrees here, because when you're pushing, you are going to form the 90 degrees. So if your wooden rib is, doesn't have a good 90 degrees, get a sandpaper and then just sand it. So in this part here, you have a nice 90 degrees. And this is my number one wooden rib. And you see that when you push down, you got a nice 90 degrees there on the, the inside hand, slightly push against 
this part of a uh, wood rib. And double check. Okay, slide it is smaller, so I will push more from the in inside. Push out from, push out from inside to stretch it a bit. Okay, that that's good. So I will just finish it up better. Right, so the gallery is forming nicely. Let me double check again. Final check. Okay, that's good. And round the corner here. So I like this part here slightly slanted. Okay, so it's easier for the lid to drop in. So I push the top portion slightly in so the bottom portion is a little bit wider than the top portion. And the size of uh, this part here hanging out, if it, if it is getting too wide, you can use a, a good knife to chop it off or you can do it while you are trimming, you can trim it off. So either way is fine. Let's do it now. Let me show you. This is my number 10 tool. Hold it steady and then just chop. Keep it straight and you cut. So it's very easy to cut because this blade is, the tip is very thin and the blade is thin so it doesn't have a lot of a resistance. So it's very easy to cut it. So after cutting you can see that this part here is slightly white, too white. You can trim it later but the I personally prefer just do the wet trimming. So trim it wet. The key is holding the tool fairly steady and then take your time and take it all the way down to until you touch the bed. So I remove a bit more clay from the side of the wall. A little bit clean up. Okay, so that's how I make the lid to fit the body. And I slightly prefer this part here is wider than actual size. So when I'm trimming, I could slightly remove either clay from here or the clay from the body so they will fit tight. Okay, so this is what it looked like and uh, still have a uh, quite a bit of a clay to trim, but uh, I already removed lots of them. And I will show you how I finish trimming in the later video. Right, so that's it for my demonstration and uh, see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.